Easter 2022, we made it. Somebody say, I made it. So whatever you've been through up to this point, listen, you're here. It's a clear indication that God is not done with you yet. And so I'm so, so excited. Easter is like uh, the Super Bowl Sunday of, uh, of the church faith, right? And so we get to, uh, to, to not look at the word for what it can do for us, but we can look at Jesus and uh, just all that he has done, period, for all of humanity, right? So Jesus being sent from heaven, that's heaven's response showing us how much God the Father loves us. Does he love you? Do we deserve it? That was not a trick question. Some of y'all were thinking about it. Let me let you in on a little secret. No. <laughs> but God responded from heaven, and heaven saw that we were in desperate need of a Savior. How do I know? John 3.16 says this. How, come on, good church folk. For God so loved the world that, that uh-huh. Yeah, y'all did so good. Y'all did so much better in first service. First service sounded like everybody broke out in tongues. You couldn't understand nothing. You guys got it together on this service and were able to knock it out of the park. So heaven loves us. And we know because God the Father sent the perfect sacrifice who knew no sin and became sin for every single one of us, you and I. Despite what you've done, despite what you've gone through, see, people and man will turn their backs on us, but God, you can't steal from God because God gives it away. And, and he leaves the 99 for the one, and sometimes that doesn't matter a whole lot until you're the one that he's after. Right? So this year I have come to a place in my life that, that the love of God has become so revelatory for me. Now, I will be honest with you. I will be 45 next month, <clears throat> just in case for some of those of you who like to give good gifts, I like to receive good gifts. Amen? And so, <laughs> and so I Googled midlife crisis because I'm like, like, it really just kind of rocked my socks to a whole nother level. And I'm like, why am I up in my feelings and in my emotions like that? I'm, that's just not the normal me. Anybody else like that? Right? And so, but this year as we've been preparing for Resurrection Sunday, a.k.a. Easter, I've gotten to a place of saying, man, God really loves me because I have been no good. I have done some things that I'm not very proud of. I've said some things that I am not proud to, to have said them or want to repeat them again. And for God to know what I would do from the beginning to the end and still send his son to die on the cross for me, man, that impacts me in such a way that God must really love me because there are some times that I don't even love myself. Am I talking good so far? And so the heavens loves you so much that the heavens decided to make a way for you by sending his son, Jesus. And then all we got to do is believe. See, the Bible says whoever believes in Jesus that he came. And so heaven wants us to acknowledge the death and the resurrection. But it's so important for us, for us to understand the life of Jesus. If you don't believe in the life of Jesus, then sure enough, you will not believe in the death and the resurrection. And for him to have died, he had to have and so in the life of Jesus, we're able to experience the anointing of Jesus. We can do nothing of, uh, of that on our own. It is all through the power of the cross and the life of Jesus that we can do things that we would not be able to do in the natural. Now, some of y'all are good, but y'all ain't that good. So in looking at the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, the life of Jesus brings us the anointing. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I want to let you in on this little secret. Jesus Christ, Christ is not the last name of Jesus. 
Christ means anointed one. And so if you are a believer of Jesus and you have received him in your life as Lord and Savior, now you are acknowledging that he is the anointed one. And the Bible tells us this. Are y'all here? Are y'all going to be a good church today? The Bible says this, that I can do all things through Christ, the anointed one who strengthens me. And so what does anointing mean? Anointing mean that when whatever I put my hand to, that it grows it expands it multiplies because God is with me and flows through me then anything I give attention to now will have a production of heaven upon it that should excite some of y'all and now I am not a prosperity preacher and I am not a, uh, uh, you know, name and claim it preacher. That's not the type of preacher that I am the reality is is that if some of y'all had all the money you wanted you probably kill yourself but I am an anointing preacher and I am a kingdom of heaven preacher. That means that if God before me, then who could be against me? And if he is by me and he is before me and he is behind me, uh, weapons may form, but they shall not prosper. Are y'all hearing what I'm, I'm preaching all I got? Y'all got y'all to gotta be a good church with me. There's an anointing that should rest upon you based on you being a part and receiving the anointing of heaven. The anointing of heaven was sent down to this earth on our behalf. Not because you deserved it, not because you asked for it. In fact, you were not in the council meeting of heaven when God the Father decided to send the Son. So you can't determine who Jesus was for. You can't determine what the mission was for. All we can do is be uh, uh, individuals to operate under the grace of heaven and say, God, I don't care who else you came for. I'm glad you came for me. That's a good place to shout amen if you ever wonder it. The anointing of heaven is, is, is an outpouring of, of God's power to accomplish a task through the anointed one. And so it's not that you have power. Some of y'all, I, I shook y'all hand before the service, and, uh, and just then I saw you, brother. I don't know if you're working out, but you got some guns over there. I know you, you got it going on. Some of y'all are really strong. You, sir, you, you look like you could, you could pack a mean punch. You got some power. But I promise you that your good becomes anointed when God sprinkles it on. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When the kingdom of heaven responds in a way like it did in sending Jesus to this earth, and we receive him into our life, all of a sudden now we get out of the line of doing only what we can do and stand in the line of doing what God can do and those times where you feel like you can't he pushes you through and those times where there's not enough he brings it together and those times that you feel defeated there's a victory are you hearing listen when when we can grab on to the life of Jesus I haven't even gotten to the death and the resurrection portion yet his life all by itself is good Mamas, it's like when you, when you saw your baby when it was born, and you were so excited, one, because he was out, and two, because you just love your baby, and you were so excited for the joy that that child would bring to you. You were so happy. But this is the joy that we should be experiencing when we look at how heaven has responded in their love for us. Now, I don't know very many people, that would give like the heaven gave for us. Now, when we look at the death of Jesus, the death allows you to break the yoke of the devil's clutches from your lives. Listen to this. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 through 15 says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Verse 15, and release those through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So the death has its own little understanding that if we can grab onto it, we can walk in a level of freedom that we could not have walked in if we did not have Jesus in our life. Now the life of Jesus brings an anointing on us that we can do things that we were not able to do before. Are y'all listening to me? 
And then uh, we get to the second part, and through the life of Jesus, now we see the death. And because Jesus died, now we are able to experience freedom upon our life. And the Bible says it this way, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. When Jesus died up on the cross, the veil was torn, and now we are able to walk free from bondage and free from sin and free from pornography and free from lust and free from addiction and free from depression and free from anxiety and free from lack of feeling like you're good enough and free. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Free. Now, before you clap and and give me the amen and the hallelujah and the preacher, preacher, this is why sometimes in a church house, uh, individuals are not grabbing on to this freedom that Jesus gives to us. If you don't feel free and you are in the church house and have received Jesus, it is not a Jesus problem, it is a you problem. Because what happens is, is that the death of Jesus opens the prison gate, you must walk out. I got less amens on that one and not as many people clapping. Am I losing (laughs) y'all? So when when Jesus accomplished the work uh, of, of, of what he did on the cross and the crucifixion, that moment bondage from all who would believe was broken. Now it is then our responsibility to come up out of that prison cell and say, devil, you can't hold me. You can't have me. I break every generational curse. I break everything that you try to steal from me. You cannot control me. You cannot have my mind because I received Jesus. No longer do you have a grip on me and that is what the death does for us and and then we get to the resurrection and the resurrection brings us salvation oh thank God for salvation now I am not a once saved always saved type of preacher I was in the Marine Corps hurrah semper fi for any Marines out there (laughs) In the Marine Corps, the motto is this, once a Marine, always a Marine. It doesn't matter if I've been out 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. It doesn't matter. I I carry the pride of being a Marine. Ah, it's in my blood. Not really, but they make me believe all of that stuff, right? And so (laughs) salvation is this, is that we are always walking towards salvation. We're always, every day we're working towards salvation. Every day I pick up my cross. Every day I crucify my flesh. That means that that if I decide to turn my life away from God, then I lose access to what we know as salvation. God has done the work, and how many of y'all have found Jesus? I don't know how you found him because he's never been lost. You were. He, you didn't find him. He came and found you. And he knocked on your heart. And you're not here by chance. You're here by divine intervention. Someone was on assignment and brought you to this place. And if you would just grab on to the words that are coming out of my mouth. You might walk up out of here different than the way that you came in. You might. If you grab onto it and you walk out of the cell, because some of us could walk into this place and leave the same way that we walked in, leave in the same bondage with the same mindset in the same way and in the same fashion, and this was just a great event for you. But if we could just grab onto the life, if we can grab on to the understanding of the death, If we can grab a hold to the resurrection, Romans chapter chapter 10 verse 9 says this, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You don't have to have a master's degree. You don't have to go to seminary school. You don't have to be all that intelligent, all that smart. You don't have to have a six-figure job. You don't have to have it uh, 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 like, you don't have to have a big following, a bunch of family around you. It doesn't matter what skin shade you are. It doesn't matter if you have curly hair or straight hair. Y'all change the color anyway. It doesn't matter if, 
It doesn't matter where you've come from, where in the world. All we need to do is believe. And if we would believe, then we shall be <coughs> saved. How many of y'all are glad for your salvation? How many of you are glad that he brought you out of the clutches of where you were? And the pits of where you were. Now, I'm not saying that, that every day is a good day. Did some of y'all have a bad day this week? Some of y'all have had a bad month. Some of y'all are thinking like, I was hoping for a better year and here I am, Lord. It doesn't matter. The Bible says this, that if you believe, God will take your mess and turn it into a message. See, because of Jesus... I can walk in freedom. Because of Jesus, I have access to salvation. Because of Jesus, I can have access to the Father. And there's an old hymn that goes like this. Because of Jesus, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. Some of y'all don't want to sing because I don't want them to know how old I am. Listen, some of y'all. <laughs> Don't listen to my mouth. Don't just listen to my heart. <laughs> that didn't sound pretty, but in my, in my, in my mind it did. You, ever, you know, when I go to the gym and I work out really hard, I have a really tough workout session, and, and I go home, and I feel kind of swole. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I, right? And, and I went to the gym, and my shoulders are all like this. I got done with the gym. I felt puffed up. I'm walking around. And I tell my wife, if I only look like I feel... <laughs> <laughs> if I could only sound how I feel. <laughs> but because of Jesus, because of Jesus, because of Jesus. I, you know, today I was taking an opportunity, I was just looking at the, at the face of the worshipers just to see their level of enjoyment on worship. And they, they may not be singing, but I could see their face. Like they, there's just some faces that when somebody's into it and they're worshiping God through their instrument, you could just see it through their face. You know what I'm talking about? You could just see that, that they love God through their worship. There's something that happens whenever the heavens touches the earth and the response is not this. I feel Jesus in the atmosphere. No, you don't. No, you don't. There's absolutely no way that the heavens can touch the earth, that the Spirit of God can move in your heart and your response is a stillness. There's something that happens. There's like a little shimmy. Some of y'all, can y'all little do a little shimmy, a little shoulder, something like, ooh, like I, I just, ooh, I feel the Spirit of the Lord. There's no way that there's no response and you feel the Spirit of the Lord upon your life. There's something that happens because of Jesus. I knew where I was headed, y'all. Some of y'all see me on this side of the microphone and be like, that's a nice jacket that Pastor G got on today. But you don't know what was this behind this microphone many, many moons ago. I may not be where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. If you'd like to trade stories one day, I'll let you know. There's some things. See, the difference between me and some people is I never got caught. But if I tell you some of the story, you'll realize, if, you'll begin to understand. If God could use you to preach, he could, he could surely use me. You ever see somebody get saved and you're like, if God could save them, whoo, surely he can save you. See, the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus changed my life radically. Radically. It's clear how radically God has moved in my life. I'm very demonstrative. Even the camera folks, they're just kind of like, listen, we got to have special people that could keep up with you while you're preaching because you are all the way all over the place on that stage. Can you stay still? And I cannot stay still when it comes to demonstrating the power of God upon my life. Why? Because I know what he's brought me through. Have you ever seen somebody ugly dance in church? And they're not ugly dancing because they think they could dance. They're ugly dancing because of what God has brought them through. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's some people that shout in church. Why? Because they know what they have been through. There's some people, there is a, an expression that flows from them only because they've been through hell and God brought them out. 
And when God has done for them something that is supernatural and miraculous, you have no other alternative but to be demonstrative and, and all over the place and just loud and rambunctious. But why are they always yelling and, and, and acting a fool in church? Because he brought me through. Hey, y'all going to make me sweat. Ah, oh, the life, death, and the resurrection has radically changed my life. See, I, I want to take a moment and give an understanding to the tomb. See, we have this stage set up here. We started with week one, and, and this was the Garden of Eden where everything was kicked off and Jesus went to go pray and there was droplets of blood that he began to sweat because of the agonizing what he was feeling in that in that environment he was saying God the father if there's any other way remove this cup from me nonetheless not my will but your will be done and then we have the scene of the cross, and next week we'll preach on what, what was happening at the cross during that time. But, but this week, for the sake of, of today, Resurrection Sunday, let's talk about the tomb. Somebody say the tomb. See, there was this tomb. And the tombs of that time are much different than the tombs of today. See, those, those tombs, they were recyclable tombs, so to speak. That they would put a body in the tomb, and after a period of time, they would remove the body and put another body in it. Jesus was placed in this tomb, and the stone was rolled into place. Now, the stone that was placed was a big old rock. And historian experts believe that this rock was... Two tons in weight. Now, for those, some of you that may be asking, two tons is this. One ton is 2,000 pounds. Two tons is 4,000 pounds. That's more than my fingers and my toes. I had to look it up. Two tons is equivalent to 20 elephant, baby elephants. Two tons is equivalent to two adult rhinos. Two tons is equivalent to a Dodge Charger rolled in front of the tomb. Now, during that time, not only did they put a tomb or a stone in front of the tomb, they would tether it with a rope and tie the rock in place. And they would then put wax around the edges to seal the rock so that no one can roll it and, and, and potentially an animal can sneak in or someone to come and to steal the body. So this is the scene. We have this tomb, and this tomb and this giant rock. And for somebody to move the rock, someone would need uh, some special skills. And someone would need to have an understanding and the equipment to move this rock. They did it to ensure that the disciples would not come and try to steal the body. Now, a burial of this type usually is for individuals who have money, people of wealth. Isn't it amazing that when Jesus rode into town, into the town of Jerusalem, they heralded him like a king. And they all yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest and received Jesus as if he was a king. But then they killed him like a dog. They beat him to a place of, uh, of unrecognition. They shamed him up on that cross. And after heralding him like a king and treating him like a dog, they buried him like a wealthy man. See, when we look at our lives, what is really going on is not what's really going on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of us in our life, for us to understand what's happening is we got to stop looking with our natural eye and begin to look with our spiritual eyes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you cannot have a victory without a battle. You cannot have a victory unless there is a war. There has to be a fight going on for you to experience a victory. You cannot have a message without a 
mess. There has to be some things going on for us to be able to then experience the glory and the miracle of God. And this big stone in that fashion needed to be in front of this tomb for us to experience the goodness and the glory and the miracle of God. See, my wife is correct, as in she mentioned earlier, there were some women that went down to the tomb and experienced the tomb empty. Yay, women, and all of y'all like, Ooh. Can I remind you that it was the woman who ate the apple first? So don't be, Ooh. When y'all were the first ones to bring sin into the world. <laughs> Little side note, that's not part of the message, but I figured I'd throw that in there. Man, let me hear y'all. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I got y'all. <laughs> and so we get to Mark, chapter 16, verse 1 through 3. The women go down to the tomb, but they experience a problem. They want to draw closer to Jesus. They want to have a better relationship with Jesus. And they went to go and embalm the body and honor the body. And so they go down to do what they felt in their heart and in their spirit needed to be done. And this is what it says in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. Now, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of, J uh, of James, and Salome bought spices and they might, uh, that they might come and anoint him. Verse 2, very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Verse 3, and they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? Now God began to give me some revelation in regards to this big rock in front of the tomb. See, they went to go honor Jesus. How many of you have ever tried your best to honor your relationship with Jesus? How many of you have ever gotten to a place where you're saying, you know what, I just want my relationship with God to just be, I, I, we just need to be rock solid. We, I, want, I want my relationship to be great. I want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Do you remember the first time that you were baptized? Do you remember the first time that you received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life? Do you remember that moment? Or, or perhaps you haven't done any of those and you're saying, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like God is calling me and I want to draw closer, but I don't know what the next steps are and this is what this is what God brought to my heart that some of us are like Mary and uh, uh, Mary the, the 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 mother of James and Mary Magdalene we're like these women and we are at a place of saying I want to draw closer but who will move away the stones that are blocking me from drawing closer to him what are these stones these stones of of your attitude the stones of your addiction the stones of the things that you keep falling into. The stones of the inappropriate relationship that you find yourself over and over again. The stones of your constant lying. The stones that are, are bringing you to a place of depression and anxiety. See, over and over we're saying we want to draw closer to God, but we realize that there are some things that are blocking us from drawing closer to him. Am I talking to a people that have potentially said that at one point in their life? I want to get closer. I want to honor him, but there are some things that are prohibiting me from drawing closer, and I just need help. Maybe if I call Pastor G, he'll pray me through. And maybe I'll call Pastor J, and she'll give me some wise counsel maybe I'll call the deliverance team and they'll perform another deliverance on me and over and over we're asking who will move the stones that are blocking us these stones that they seem like they're immovable like they're unshakable and that they're unbreakable and it will require someone to move them on our behalf And then Jesus says, listen, I'm the great exchange. And because of what I'm doing, you won't need anyone else to move those rocks. I will move those rocks out of your life for you. I will ensure that, that, that my relationship with you is not based off of what someone else can do, but will be based off of what I have already done. Has Jesus done anything for any of you? 
God removes every excuse as to why we can't draw closer to him. The heavens made a way where there was no way so that we can be in relationship with him. There was a great exchange already done. And so if you're in this place and you're feeling like you just don't know what next step to take, the step was already taken for you. It is just our responsibility to receive from heaven the greatest love story. Got to the tomb, they saw that the stone was rolled away. And in the book of Matthew, it gives us an understanding of how an angel of the Lord came down and rolled the stone away. He says that he even grabbed the stone and, and as he moved it out of the way, that the Roman guard was so afraid that he fell to the ground as if he was dead. And Jesus comes out of the tomb. The resurrection story. See, this is before the women even arrived. That Jesus came out of the area of the tomb. The women did not have to roll the stone, the stone away. They didn't have to try to come and work. They didn't, they didn't have to do anything. The job was already done. Wow. See, the reality is, is that some of us that want to draw closer to God in this place constantly are looking for all of the excuses as to why we can't. Well, God, you know that I'm really busy. I got a lot of stuff going on. And God, you know my, my family. And God, you know this. And God, you know that. And we're constantly having all of these reasons as to why we can't draw closer to the Lord. And we say things like this. Like, God knows my heart. Well, he does know your heart. The Bible says this, that our hearts are desperately wicked. But Jesus is saying, listen, I've already removed the stone. Will you receive me? The work is already done. It's already been accomplished. Will you receive of the salvation that I'm offering you? It costs you nothing, but it cost me everything. See, this Resurrection Sunday, it, it's not just about coming to a good church service. It's about saying, Jesus, I need you in my life. Because without you, I cannot. Man, some of us just need to stop being machismo. And acting, acting like we, we have it all together. Because the reality is... You really don't. And ladies, get into a place of believing in yourself and, and believing that you are as great as God created you for. And young people, don't put off tomorrow what you should do today. I'll do it tomorrow. I have time. Let me do what I want today. I promise you, young people, that 10 years turns into 20 20 turns into 30 and talk to some people that are over 40 years old and let them let you in on a little secret of how quick you get there. Jesus already removed the stones. The stones that you battle with day in and day, not, day out. The stones that you continuously pick up on a daily basis and say I just can't do it I don't know what to do I don't know what next step to take Jesus is saying you don't have to hold on to it because I've already rolled away the stone so think for a moment those of you that are watching online and those that are in the room think about those stones that have been keeping you from drawing closer to God And now think for a moment, are those stones really worth it? Or is it time that you begin to walk according to what God has called you to? 
And so in a moment, I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to come and get, grab one of these stones. Now, there's no power in these stones that we have up here. This is just a rock that will serve as a reminder for you that when you find it in your pocket or wherever you put it at in your home, that you can remember of the stones that no longer hold you back from drawing closer to God. At the count of three, I'll call everyone and you guys can make a decision at that point to make that decision. But the first call that I want to make is to anyone in the house that has never made Jesus Lord and Savior of their lives. Individuals who have not made a decision to follow Jesus. Individuals that, that have said, listen, I, I've heard about this church thing, this Jesus thing, but I, I just don't know what it is, and, and I'm willing to give it a shot. I, I've tried everything else, and maybe I just need to try Jesus if that's you. Just slip up your hand right where you are is that, if that's you. Is there anyone in the house that has never received Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life? Is there anyone here that would like to make that decision on today? Perhaps you're here and you're saying, man, I've backslidden, and I just... I've fallen off and I'm ready to come on back home and there are things that have been blocking me but I will no longer allow them to keep blocking me in my life. If that's you, just slip up your hand right where you are. Is that anyone? You guys come on up and come and get your rocks. Come on up and get your rock. Come on, y'all. Y'all celebrate them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who else is needing their rock and is saying, I just need to rededicate myself. Go ahead and grab your rock here. You guys just stay up here for a moment and I want to pray for y'all before you go back to your seat. Come and get your rocks. Here you go. Come and get your rocks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray over every individual that has come to this altar right now to grab one of these rocks as a symbol of faith, God. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus that no longer will they walk uh, feeling like they cannot come draw close to you, that there are things that are blocking them. Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus that you would remove any hindrance, anything that blocks them from drawing uh, to a closer relationship, Father God. They're, they're, they're understanding of feeling like that they're not good enough father that you would remove it right now in the name of Jesus and that you can remind them that for them is who you came for my God that you knew the end from the beginning and that we can say welcome home to each and every single one of these individuals on today in the name of Jesus we declare today is the first day of the rest of your life Jesus name hallelujah you guys celebrate that one more time hallelujah this last call at the count of three is for individuals that are saying you know what I'm not going to allow anyone to block me from a closer relationship with God see so often there are times in our lives where, where it is church people who actually are the ones that judge us and push us away or, or there are individuals like family and friends that we feel like they just talk about us and they're the ones that keep us from drawing closer with the Lord. And God is saying to every single one of you on today that no one is worth going to hell for. God desires a relationship with you. Will you take your walk to the next level? If you're ready to come and grab a rock as a symbol of your faith today that you won't allow anything that will block you, come and get your rock. Three, two, one, come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Celebrate them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God.
God, I pray over every single one of these individuals that have taken a step of faith on today that they would not allow anything that would stop them from drawing closer to you, Father God. We pray for, for a new level of faith, Father, that they would go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, Father God, that they would allow the, their walk to not be, uh, 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 that, that no barrier would come against them, that there would not be anything that would stand in their way, God, that you would remove the people that don't belong in their lives, that you would remove the mindsets from them in the name of Jesus God we declare freedom over their minds and freedom in their lives on today Father God Lord we thank you that you are the great exchange we thank you that in you there is life and in you God that we can have it more abundantly we are so grateful God that you didn't leave us in the pit of our sin you didn't leave us in, in a dark place Father God but you came for us because you loved us so much so Thank you, God. Just tell them thank you right where you are. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Hey guys, thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Listen, if you have any prayer needs, we would love to pray with you. So send them on over. Our hope and desire is that the message was an impact to you and your children and your entire household. We take our motto here seriously. Why do life alone? Listen, there's no reason why you should do life alone. So come and be a part of do us. Let's do life together. <laughs>